Hi, my name is Carrie, and today I'll be discussing how to get optimal performance out of your cryo station, both in terms of temperature performance and vibration performance. One common issue that a lot of customers have is managing wires. Many customers have much busier sample spaces than this. They have CB12 chips, LCC28s, um, RF coax cables, and just a lot going on within the chamber. It's really important to avoid touches when possible such that you don't increase the base temperature of your system. If you introduce wires into your sample space, you need to make sure that they're thermally lagged, so this wire here is not. You have to remember that the radiation shield is at 30 Kelvin, while inside is at 4 Kelvin, so if you don't thermally lag the wires, the outside wires will be at 30 Kelvin and introduce the heat load inside of your sample space. So we'll have to thermally lag this wire underneath this thermal clamp. So now we've mounted our sample thermometer wire such that it's lagged through the thermal clamp. It's important to have some of the length of the wire outside the clamp and enough inside the sample thermometer as well to get the resistance um, such that it's not introducing a heat load inside. So once we've put this wire through the thermal clamp, you'll want to make sure that it doesn't touch the sample mount at any point. You can manage the wires by using tweezers. Then you can put on the radiation shield and make sure that the wires don't touch in the radiation shield. You can remove the lid of the radiation shield and look down into the space to make sure no wires are touching and then manage the wires within. If you're gonna be introducing wires into the sample space, it's important to not use copper. Copper has a really high thermal conductivity which will increase the base temperature inside the samples chamber. We recommend using phosphor bronze or manganin. We provide these in the accessory kit that comes with your system. For most cases, phosphor bronze works fine. Within the sample space, it's important to make sure that the screws are tightened down to the proper tension. The screws on the platform should be tightened to about five inch pounds, which really isn't very much force. You wanna make sure you don't strip the wires, but that there's good thermal contact. Another important screw to make sure it's tight is on the sample mount itself. You wanna make sure that this is really tight so that the sample mount doesn't move and it has good thermal contact within the holder. This screw can't strip out since it's being held with this square nut, so you can really get this very tight. It's also important to make sure within the sample space that everything has the proper grease on it. Um, we use end grease for metal to metal contact, so you can use grease underneath the sample mount to the platform. L grease is used for the O-rings. You wanna make sure every time you use the system that there's a thin layer of L grease noticeable on the O-ring. Otherwise, you won't get a good vacuum seal. So L grease is used for vacuum. And then you can use VGE for attaching samples. It's an adhesive that can go to cold temperatures. Um, you also wanna make sure that you use uh, Belleville washers on any joint that's gonna be cold. Belleville washers go underneath the screws and they're cone-shaped and you wanna make sure that the suction goes down. So this helps with the thermal contact of the screws within the sample space. In order to achieve the best base temperature, you do want to use your radiation shield and leave all windows in. This will help you get to the lowest temperature possible. So if you have reasons to take out the radiation sh shield, just be aware that the temperature, the base temperature will be higher. Another thing to note is that you should always wear gloves when you're working within the sample space. Now we're going to move on to managing vibrations. To achieve the lowest vibrations, you want to make sure that the cryostat is off of its shipping plate and bolted down to the table in seven places. So the three in the sample chamber, the two here, and the two in back. You also wanna make sure that the retaining rings are removed from the shipping, and you also wanna make sure that your shipping support is removed. So everything that the system came with to hold it in place, you want to be able to move when the system is running. That will minimize your vibrations. 
To manage vibrations, it's also important that you have your hoses oriented properly. You wanna make sure that your hoses aren't touching anything. You want them off of the table and not touching any support structure around. You also wanna make sure they're not touching a wall. It's also important to have a 180 degree bend in the hose. As the helium pumps through the hoses, you should feel a radial expansion of the helium as it goes through. You don't wanna feel a lateral tugging because that means that the hoses are pulling against the cryostat, increasing your vibrations. It's also important to make sure that none of the cables are tied together with the helium hoses. And it's also important to make sure that you have space between your vacuum hose and your helium hoses. Nitrogen is an optional add-on to supply to the control unit. While it's not necessary, it is recommended because what happens as you vent up is that nitrogen purges into the sample chamber. So that helps the sample space stay clean. This will help cooldowns go faster, the, pump, the initial roughing pump, and it'll keep everything inside clean. This will extend the longevity of your system. If you have any questions about the performance of your system, please contact us at Montana Instruments. We'd be happy to help.